Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm sharing how I made daisy flowers out of cardstock and added them to this reverse canvas. I love how beautiful paper flowers can be and I'm so excited to share with you how I put this together. This is the daisy pattern that I'm using for my tutorial. I found this one on Etsy. I couldn't find anything for daisies on Cricut Design Space, so I decided to purchase this one. And I can leave a link down below if you are interested in the exact one that I'm using. And if you select on the second screen, it'll show what you get with this. She actually gives an SVG, PDF, and PNG form. For a cutting machine like Cricut, I have found that the SVG files work the best. So those are the ones that I'm going to be importing into Cricut Design Space. But these are the four different templates it comes with. I'm just over in my finder here, and this is what the file looks like when you open it up. And like I said, I'm just going to upload the SVG images into Cricut Design Space. So I'm going to go over to Cricut, then I'll go over to Upload. And I actually already uploaded these, but how you do it is just go Upload Image, then select Browse. Then you'll just go over here and select all four of the SVG ones, which it says right after it, that's SVG. But since I have those uploaded already, I will just select all four of these. I'm also using this rain boot image, so I'm going to select that also. Then I'll just hit insert images. Pulls everything up. I'm also going to be cutting out a few leaves, so I'm going to go over to images. And I found a few in Cricut Design Space, so I'm just going to search for those now. This one says rose leaf, but I'm still going to use it for my lilies. I'll select that one. For the next one, I'm just going to search by the numbers to make sure it's the same one I was using earlier. So I'll select that and insert both of those into Cricut Design Space as well. So now we have a whole bunch of things in here and it's looking kind of crowded. So what I'm going to do is just make everything smaller. Then I'm just going to move it all to the side. I'm going to use this square to figure out my sizing for everything. If you've watched my channel for a while, then you've probably seen me do this all the time. I'm going to be putting all of this on a canvas and the canvas is 10 inches by 20 inches. So I'm gonna go up to my sizing, I'll hit unlock, then I'll double click in the width and hit 10, then I'll go over to my height and hit 20, then I'll hit enter. So this is the size of my canvas. I'm going to be making it a reverse canvas, so it will have a little bit of an edge to it, so I'm not gonna wanna put the boot all the way up against it. But what I'm gonna do is go up here and change this to white. Then I'm going to grab my boots and send that to the front. I just hit right click and I'll bring that over here. I've already played around with this and decided that I wanted to make the height 11.5 inches. These rainbow images are part of my Patreon membership. And once again, you've probably heard me talk about this a lot on my channel, but we have over 200 images and you can use these images for personal or commercial use. So I'll have a link down below if you wanna check out my Patreon account. Now I'm gonna highlight over both of these and hit align center horizontally, just to give me an idea of where I want to put that. I'm going to be using heat transfer vinyl for the boots. So I'm gonna go up here and choose the color. It's kind of a pinkish color, so I'm just gonna select that. Now we have all of our flower pieces. I'm gonna separate these so you can see what they all look like. The leaves I'm gonna do very last, so I'm just gonna move those to the side. So as you can see, I have this one selected and over in the layers panel, it says Daisy Large Petals. So she has the large petals, then she has um, the smaller petals, then she has the center petal, and these, this last one is the fringe center. So I'm gonna make mine a little different than hers. I might go back to my Etsy. What I'm gonna do is actually not even do this center piece. It's totally up to you if you want to use it. I was going back and forth trying to decide. I actually made this the same color as these outer petals and I tested it out and it looked cute, but I decided I'm just going to do the fringe piece. 
So I'm going to go back over to Cricut Design Space and I'm just going to delete this because I'm not going to use it. But you definitely can if you want to. But my flower just didn't look as full, so I'm actually going to do another set of these. So I'm just going to hit duplicate and I'll be making these different sizes. I already played around with how I wanted all of these flowers to look, so I'm going to go to my projects and go into that one. So I spent some time trying to figure out how I wanted to size this and make this look. So this is how I'm wanting it to look here. I basically just played around with the different colors and the sizing, and this is what I came up with. To get a better visual of this, what I'm going to do is copy these flowers and bring it into the other design space to just make it a little bit easier to see it all. So I'm going to hide these, then I'm going to group all of this together, and I'm going to right click and hit copy. Then I'm going to go back to my other project. Then I'm going to right click and hit paste. So now you can kind of visualize what this is going to look like. Also, I'm going to change these boot colors to more pink. I'm going to hit ungroup. I'm going to figure out my sizes for my white flowers first. So I have two white flowers. I have a large and then a smaller one. So for the large one, the width is 4.5 inches. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to change all of these to white. And then I'm going to ungroup this. So I'm going to have my petals be larger and then get smaller. My largest flower is going to be 4.5 inches for the width. So I'm going to go over to my width and hit 4.5 and I'm going to have two of them be 4.5 inches. So I'm going to go up here and make that 4.5 inches. Then I'm going to go down to my next one and I'm going to make it four inches. So I'll hit four inches. You can also just delete and then go back over and hit duplicate. So right now we have two 4.5 inch flowers. Then we have two four inch flowers. Now I'm gonna duplicate this again. And I'm gonna make this one 3.5 inches. So I'm just going down 0.5 inches each time and I'll hit duplicate. And basically what we're going to do is just center these, all of these on top of each other like this. So it gives you kind of a visual of what it's going to look like. That's our large white flower. We're also going to do a smaller white flower. This one's going to be three inches for the width. So what I'm going to do is go down here and hit duplicate. I'm going to bring this one over here. And three inches is going to be the larger part of this flower. So I'm going to make this one three inches. Then I'm going to hit duplicate. So we have two three inch ones. Then I'll hit duplicate again and make this one 2.5 inches. Duplicate that so we have two of those. And I really hope this is making sense because it's a little confusing when you see it in Cricut Design Space. And then I'm going to make this one two inches and I'll hit duplicate. So we have three inch, 2.5 inch, and two inch. Those are gonna be our white flowers. I'm gonna highlight over these, bring them closer, and I'm just gonna move these out of the way for now while we do the other flowers. So I'm gonna move this all the way up here. So now we have both of our white flowers sized and ready. So the next thing I'm gonna do is do one pink flower. So I'm gonna grab one of these again, I'm going to come up here and make it pink. And I'm going to make this pink one the same size as our large white one. So what I'm going to do is hit ungroup. I'm going to make this one 4.5 inches. And I'll make this one 4.5 inches also. Then I'll make this one 4 inches. And I'll hit duplicate and make this one 4 inches. And then I'll duplicate again and make this 3.5 inches. And then I'll hit duplicate to have another one of those. So now if I bring these over by the white ones, they will be the exact same size as these large white ones. So here's three different flower sets. Now we have just these paler pink flowers. 
This one is going to be kind of a medium size. It's going to start off at 3.5 inches. So I'm just going to go over to one of these that is 3.5 and I'll hit duplicate. Then I'm going to slide this over here. I'm going to make this a paler pink color and then I will duplicate that. So these are both 3.5. I'm going to duplicate it again and make this three inches. Duplicate it so it's the same size. Then I will duplicate it again and make it 2.5 inches. Here's our four flower sets. My last flower is this smaller pale pink flower. It's the same size as this white flower. So what I'm actually gonna do is come over here and I am going to highlight over this and I'm gonna duplicate the whole thing. Then I'm gonna just bring it down and I need to make sure to change it to this color though. So I'm gonna go up to my color and select the pale pink color. So that's an easier way to do it too. And it, you can double check, it starts off at three inches, then you wanna go 2.5 and then two inches. So that's five flowers that we have there. Each flower piece is going to have a yellow center, which is what these purple things are over here. It's, it's the fringe center. I'm gonna make it yellow. It comes with four, but we need five. So I am going to ungroup and I'll just duplicate one of these. I am gonna make these different sizes though to fit the flowers. But I have two that are 10.5 inches for the height one that's 10 and two that is 9.5 inches and they're all one inch for the width. I feel like this is one of my most overwhelming Cricut Design Space videos with all of these different patterns. But now I'm just gonna do the leaves. I wanna have three of these and I already figured out the sizing for these also. This one I am going to make it 2.5 inches for the height. Then I'm gonna hit duplicate and have two the same size but then I'm gonna hit duplicate again and make this one just a little bit smaller. I'm gonna do two inches for the height. If you look over the, in the layers panel down to the right here, it comes with two different layers and I actually want the layer that they have hidden. So I'm gonna hide this one and unhide this layer. It looks kind of funky on here, but what you'll do is connect these two pieces and it gives it more of a shape to it to give it a little bit more of a realistic look. I'm going to have the Cricut cut out five of these leaves. This one, I'm gonna make it 1.6 inches for the width, and I'm going to make another one that same size. Then I'm going to duplicate again and make the next one 1.4 inches for the width. And then I'm gonna duplicate this one more time, and I'm gonna make this one one inch for the width and I'll duplicate that and just make a second one. Okay, I feel like that was maybe a little overwhelming, but I have five different flower templates, and it's important to make it sure that it's what color cardstock it is, because it's going to separate these onto different mats. It'll put all of the white cardstock on one, all of the pink on another, and all of these lighter pinks on another mat, and then it'll separate these two. I want the green to be the same color cardstock, so what I'm gonna do is just change this to the same color as the other leaves. That way it'll put all of these green leaves on one mat. So now I'm just going to delete this here. So I'm gonna hide my rectangle and boots. I'm gonna delete this since we just used it as a guide. And now I'm going to find my boot. If you look over in the layers panel, there's actually two layers for my rain boots. I need to attach this together, otherwise this little piece in the rain boot will show up next to the boot. It won't actually be inside of it. So I'm just going to attach it. Right now, these rain boots are matching with this color pink, and I don't want them to be on the same mat because one's heat transfer vinyl and one's cardstock. So I'm just gonna make this a different color. Just gonna kinda do that. Okay, here's all of our pieces. Now I'm ready to click on make it. All of my cardstock is eight and a half by 11. Cricut Design Space automatically puts it on a 12 by 12 material size. So you will definitely wanna change it if you're using eight and a half by 11 cardstock. So I'm gonna change it and you can see how it puts it on different mats. 
and I am going to see if I could combine these on other mats because Cricut's not very good about doing that and I want to save as much material as possible. So I'm going to click on these three little dots here. I'm going to hit move object and I'm going to select this one. I'll hit confirm and I'm just going to slide this up and slide this down. Then I'm gonna go back over to this and I'm gonna hit the three dots again. I'm going to hit move object and I'm gonna select the second mat. Then I'm gonna bring this down here. Now you can see that we don't even have to use this mat. It can all fit on just two sheets of cardstock, which is really nice. So now I'm gonna go down to this one and I'll select eight and a half by 11 for the material size. Then I'll go down to this one and do the same thing. Here's my heat transfer vinyl. I'm going to select mirror since we'll need this one to be mirrored. And I'm gonna keep it with the 12 by 12 because I'm using a larger sheet of vinyl. Now I'm gonna come down to here and I'll choose eight and a half by 11 again. And the last one I'm gonna do eight and a half by 11 also. Okay, now I'm ready to hit continue. I'm using 65 pound cardstock, so I'm going to select that option which says light cardstock. I'll start cutting this out. It looks like it's going to start with the white one first, so I'll grab my white cardstock and I'll just follow along with the prompts. I placed the white cardstock on the mat and have the Cricut cut that out first. I'm using 65 pound cardstock. It's the Recollections brand from Michaels, which is one of my favorites to work with. The easiest way to remove the paper from the mat is to bend the mat backwards. It also really helps to grab the Cricut spatula tool to help remove the paper as well. Now that it's done with the first one, it'll have a check mark and it'll show which mat it's going to next. So I'm going to load another white sheet of cardstock. It was cutting through pretty well, but there was a couple pieces on those flowers that I didn't quite cut through. So I'm gonna go over to my pressure and select more. And I think that will help with that. Here the Cricut is cutting out the other colors of cardstock and here's how the flowers are looking. Now that the Cricut has cut out all the flower templates, it's going to move on to the rain boots. I already clicked mirror and as you can see it says mirror on, but I need to go up and change my material setting to everyday iron on. I load my heat transfer vinyl shiny side down on the mat. I'm using Caesar Easy Weed and I can link this color that I'm using down below. And lastly, the Cricut will cut out the fringe center and the leaves. The flowers were randomly arranged on the mat, so I went through and figured out what sizes went with each flower and grouped those together. Now I'm ready to make my first flower. I grab the largest piece first and use a wooden dowel to roll the flowers inward. I picked up the dowel at Michael's. You'll want to go around the whole flower and once you're done, you can kind of shape it a little bit more with your fingers. Once you're done, turn the flower around and press around the outer edge of that circle. This will give it a nice shape. Then I grab the next layer and follow the exact same process for all of the next flower pieces. Here's all six of them when they are done. Now I'm ready to glue them on. I like to use a hot glue gun. I place glue right in the center part of the flower and lay another layer on top. When you place it on top, you want to make sure they aren't overlapped exactly. You want to place the flower petals opposite of the other ones so you can see them all well. You'll gradually go down in size while layering the flowers on top of each other.
Now I'll show you how to do the inner fringe part. First, you'll want to fold it in half. Once you have it folded, then you'll just want to start rolling it. You can add glue along the way, but for me, I found it easier to just add glue at the way end. Once you've rolled it tight, then just add a little hot glue on the end and attach it together. Next, you'll add hot glue in the center of the flower again and press the fringe piece down right in the center. Here's how this one looks when it's done. I just love flowers, so I think it's so pretty. I made the exact same flowers off camera because it is the exact same process, but I wanted to show you how I did the center piece for the two smaller flowers. The fringe cardstock I originally cut out was too big and wouldn't fit in the center, so I decided to cut it in half before rolling it, and that worked perfectly. So in Cricut Design Space, instead of making it 9 or 10 inches, I would make it 4 or 5 inches. Now I'm ready to put the rose leaves together. What you'll do is fold the leaf together where that gap is, then turn it around and add hot glue to the little flap. I definitely needed a smaller glue gun because too much glue came out um, of it, making it hard to do these smaller leaves, as you can see here. Here's what the leaves look like. I like how it gives it more of a lifelike appearance. Next, I'm just weeding the rain boots design. There's a lot of steps with this project, but I feel like it was so worth it because I am so excited about how it turned out. I found this six pack of canvases at Michael's. I bought the six pack because it was on sale and this is what I'll be using for my canvas. Now I'm ready to remove the canvas from the frame. To do this, I take my X-Acto knife and run it around the outside part of the staples. You usually have to work a little harder on each corner, but once you get that, then you can just pull the canvas off of the frame. This frame had a sticker on top. I removed it, but it was pretty sticky. I needed to sand it down, but I couldn't find any of my sanding paper, so I just let it go. Next, I rip the canvas off. It's pretty easy to take it off and I always just leave the staples in because it would be way too much of a pain to remove them. You can stain or paint your wood. I really like to paint mine with a baby wipe. It's just such an easy way to do it and it still gives it a nice stained look. While I let that dry, I'm going to press my HTV design onto my canvas. I set my Cricut Easy Press 2 to 340 at 30 degrees. I place my canvas on top of my Easy Press mat and center my design on the canvas. I'm using a Teflon sheet to protect the surface, then place my Easy Press on top. The machine didn't quite cover the design, so I pressed for the full time for the bottom part, then I lifted the Easy Press up and placed it toward the top and pressed that for the full time as well. I let the vinyl cool down a little bit, then removed the carrier sheet. Now I'm ready to add my flowers and leaves. I recommend actually attaching the wood frame first, which would make it easier to turn it over, but I didn't do that. Um, what I did is align my flowers and my leaves where I wanted it so that I had an idea of where they were going to go.
after it felt like forever, I finally had it arranged where I wanted them. So then I started removing the rose leaves and started gluing pieces down. I started with the green leaves first since it was going to be under the flowers. Once I have the flowers down, then I start arranging the rose leaves and gluing those down last. I'm just loving how this is looking. Next, I turn my frame around and place hot glue on it, then press it down on the canvas. There's different ways to attach your canvas. You can staple it on the back as well. And like I said earlier, I should have attached the frame before adding the flowers because it made it difficult to turn the frame around to see the back. So if you decide to make this, I'd recommending, I would recommend attaching the canvas first. Then I add a little more hot glue where it's needed and take scissors to cut off the excess canvas. And here's how the project turned out. I just love how bright and cheerful it is. It's perfect for spring and I'm excited to find a place for it in my house. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you are new. I'd love to have you here. And don't forget to check out my Patreon account in the description box for images like this rain boot and several other images. And I hope you guys all have a great day.